Like a lot of people, I remember being into all things Pokemon, and I can remember the episode Bye Bye Butterfree vividly. And when Ash let his Butterfree go so that it could just live its best life, I legitimately felt sad about it even though I was really young. Now as far as Butterfree goes, I know it's a popular Pokemon, but it's never been my personal cup of tea. And outside of getting it for the Dex entry when I was younger, I never really put any serious consideration into using it on my team. So today, like a lot of these solo runs give me the chance to do, I get to use a Pokemon that I'm not familiar with. A fair warning up front is like some of these other runs like Executor, that this is a Pokemon whose success solely relies on the sleep status and I'll touch on it in the video and I'll do the best I can to get an entertaining run but get ready for a lot of sleep powder shenanigans today. And as far as guessing the opening Pokemon from Professor Oak, it was Nidoqueen and out of nearly 300 comments, only like 4 of you even guessed and there were a few others that just didn't really get it but tried anyway. And I think I'm going to scrap that feature for now so don't guess anymore on the next video. And I'd like to say that I do Pokemon solo run content often and if that sounds interesting to you feel free to subscribe to be kept up to date likes and comments to get that engagement up is what really helps channels to grow and if you want to help me out whether you are a returning subscriber like D's master maybe someone new maybe someone a little bit shy just scroll down and type in not not because a lot of things are going to be put to sleep today and the last thing I'll say really quickly is that I've been streaming right here on YouTube on the channel every Friday 2 p.m. Central 12 p.m. Pacific so if you want to catch some live footage check that out and with that out of the way, sit back, relax, grab yourself a soda pop, and let's just get into it. As usual, I set Butterfree as my starter via the Universal Pokemon Randomizer and I gave it perfect DVs. And guys, there's a few things we need to cover real quick. The first is that my base stats are not Butterfree's because I forgot to change them and I'll go over that in a minute. But the next thing is the name and I need you to kind of stick with me for this one. It's going to be Dr. Mrs. And it's after the wife of the Monarch and the Venture Bros cartoon. Now if you know, it'll make sense and if you don't know, then you should just look it up. But I don't know what to tell you other than Dr. Mrs. the Monarch just doesn't fit in the text box. Second, I would like to talk about the overlay real quick. I have done some streams, so you might have seen this one already, but some of you don't watch the streams. You should watch those, by the way. But I moved some things around. I added a couple of things. Now, first up, I got around to some of the feedback, and I changed up the font for all the numbers for more readability. And I changed my numbers in the game time to be a mono spaced font so it's not always jumping around. Now the problem there was that I was using a font where let's say something like the number two was actually bigger than the number one and it was a little bit distracting but it's fixed now. On top of that I made the stat box have more information. We can see now that we have our experience group listed as well as how much experience to the next level added in. And for maximum legibility the stages from badge boosting or debuffs or something like that will be in those clean white boxes so there's no confusion so no one can tell me it's hard to read. There's also a mini box under my moves and these represent the enemy stats and it's a little bit smaller and this one is honestly a lot for me just so I can keep up with that kind of stuff when I'm planning a route. I originally wanted to just put the speed here to help me out but I figured it would be cool to have all the stats there just so I can point it out to you guys at various points in the runs but I did omit the HP stat on purpose because I feel like that would be taking it a little bit too far to see the exact HP number that the enemy has left but that's pretty much the new layout let me know what you think if you've seen it already on the stream you can just ignore me and let's get to the actual run and let me just say up front that Butterfree is an overall very average Pokemon and while it's more interesting than some of the other bug types and it's not as pathetic as some of the other pre-evolved stats that we've seen it does have a few problems and most of them relate to mediocrity confusion is a very solid move to start with overall but the coverage that it gets for the entire run will be very limited and the 25 pp that confusion has will make things a little tricky to get through the early game now this run is my third butterfree playthrough overall i did want to give you guys my first playthrough and then optimize it but i kind of messed that up you see the button to pause my emulator and to pause my recording software is the same keybind and i had to take a phone call pretty deep into that run so i paused the recording i came back i messed up my resets so i had to stop the recording get that right and then i started 
started a new one. And then I realized my game was paused. So without thinking, I started my recording, unpaused my game, which paused the recording instantly. And I pretty much lost an entire run. And it's completely my fault, but it is what it is. Now let's go back to those stats I mentioned at the start. When optimizing this run, I thought that what if we had a badge boosting move? And I initially thought that maybe we could start with Caterpie and we could evolve it up to level 10 and we can accomplish that. Now having tackle and evolving two times really early seems like a very small trade-off for Harden during the mid and late game. But the problem was, and I'm sure that every single one of you watching already know this obviously, but only Metapod gets hardened from the wild in Generation 1 and it just doesn't learn it if you evolve a Caterpie. Now it's weird and it was corrected the next generation, but that just means if you want to use Harden, you have to use Struggle up to level 12 when Butterfree learns confusion naturally. And guys, I did actually test out starting with Metapod just for you and let me emphatically say up front that it was just god awful. I don't really want to spoil too much of the Butterfree run that I pretty much messed up the footage on, but it had a total of 20 resets, and in the Metapod testing alone, I was already at 10 resets, and the in-game time was racking up so much that there'd be no way that I'd ever be able to catch up to my original time, so with me already approaching one hour, I gave up on this approach. It was simply too slow, but I was pretty thorough with the possibility, so I at least tried it. Now back to the Butterfree run, and here I go into Viridian, I battle the first two bug catchers, and as you can see here, it's just not that great. And we'll see at multiple points in the run that Butterfree just simply isn't great at any specific thing. And when faced with a tough matchup, you just take so much damage. But this is extremely early in the game and we don't have to focus on that too much right now. For this optimized run, I wanted more levels and I figured I'd take on the optional rival fight very early in the video. And we're going to see the very first reset of the run already. The damage is just really intense and by the time I get past the Pidgey, I'm in the red health and unless Charmander went for growl like three straight turns or something like that this was a pretty decisive defeat. Now I definitely underestimated Butterfree because I guess I was kind of used to that late game from the previous run that I did but it is what it is. The second attempt was the polar opposite of the first attempt. I get a confusion proc from confusion and I get to save a lot of health this time and I'm healthy enough just to pummel the Charizard down and that's pretty great. Next up is the light years junior trainer and on my first run I only did the three bug catchers in the forest before I went to Brock and we'll go into that soon but I tested this battle without an extra level and it was just awful. The Diglett absolutely shredded me and even if I was able to get past it the sand attack threat from the sand shrew made this a highly likely reset in the run and I didn't want that even though we do have a reset already but let's not focus on resets and all this talk of being bad right now. The point is that I routed for more experience and more levels early and it made this trainer actually possible to avoid anything like that. Now let's talk about Brock. This battle doesn't seem that bad on paper and at level 11 it's really not bad at all. Now for the Geodude it's the same as always when you have a special attack. It'll go down quick and if you get a bunch of defense curls it's just that much better and it'll put you in a much better position for Onyx. Now in the run that I was going to show I did this at level 8 and it was not great. If the Geodude went straight tackle it could very nearly kill you if not just take you out on its own because Butterfree just doesn't have a lot of bulk to it this early. The real problematic thing is that you have no way to avoid bind and even if you are a higher level than I am now you will die after a three turn bind if you don't defeat it in three confusions. Now in my level eight attempt I had to reset here four times and it definitely set the tone early for that 20 total reset run and this is kind of why I took a little more time to level up and make this less of a crapshoot and give ourselves just a better more solid early game. And you can see here I avoid bind entirely but even even then I still take a lot of damage but the important thing is that it's a first try victory and we can just keep rolling. Now from there let's just touch on some things real quick. Having only confusion is similar to other runs that only have a single damaging move and the fact that you need to be careful or route in extra healing and while the battles here aren't tough by any means with the extra levels it does present a choice. Now you can do the bare minimum and hope to kind of make it through to Cerulean or you can do what I do here you can pick up some extra battles and that'll start to get your PP pretty low so you need to heal at the Poke Center and Mount Moon and since you have topped off PP now you can afford to do things like soak up some easy experience from these one shottable Zubats and do more extra battles like this last that's weak to psychic damage and it's just going to set myself up for a more consistent time coming up soon. Now next up is something small but someone mentioned it and I thought I'd talk about it. Now this is exclusive to blue version but if you just 
get unlucky and you don't get a Paris, you can just get a Sandshrew in the patch of grass before Cerulean. It gets dig and cut as well, so it fills that same exact role as Paris does, but it has the best catch rate a Pokemon can have, whereas Paris is more rare and a lot harder to catch. Now I thought I'd just mention this real quick, it's just an option for blue version and I do it here. Next up is rival number 2, and at level 17 we learn Sleep Powder. Now as for the battle, I do avoid Sand Attack, and you know the battle is favorable if that happens, but I get extremely low in the process, and guys, we're going to talk about this a lot in this run. We know how broken sleep is in Gen 1, and now we get to see Butterfree's best strategy, and it's one huge crutch of the run. Now, I can't say that I love Sleep Powder or Sleep Moves in general, because they aren't that engaging to watch. They're not even that fun to really commentate on, but it is what it is. Butterfree absolutely needs this move, because without it, I think it would be multiple tiers lower than what it's already going to finish. But let's move on. We'll, I'll, I'm sure I'll get salty and I'll talk about that later. From there, this is part of a fairly long stretch of the game where Confusion's 25 power points really limit you. To remedy this the best that I can, I finish up with my 9 uses I had after arrival number 2 and then I return to top off my PP. Now after I finish Nugget Bridge, I get to learn Supersonic, which is an extremely luck based move that I really don't like, but it's going to be useful for a couple of fights. And I pick up the elixir, which I need to use to finish off the route so I don't have to backtrack to heal again. And before Misty, I take on the Dig Rocket Grunt just to get as much experience as I can. And from there, we can talk about another problem that pops up a few times in the game. And that's going against Psychic Types. With Confusion being our only damaging move, you only have a couple of options to deal with these bulky Psychic Types. You can either use Poison Powder and Supersonic and hope that you can chip it down with those types of damage along with your resisted low damage damage from confusion or you can use sleep powder and just slowly chip it away that way. Now you can see here that I try the poison method and I end up getting the tables turned on me and knock myself out with my own confusion damage and that's a reset right here. And even on the next attempt it's not that great even though I do win. The damage is just so low and having to rely solely on sleep powder as your sole win condition it just doesn't feel good in any run and with Butterfree it's not like a run like Parasect or Bellsprout where you can uh, put them to sleep and you can just set up to become extremely powerful. You just have to keep doing average damage until the very, very end of the run. And even an early battle like this, you can start to highlight kind of how this run's gonna feel. Now let's take a look at Misty. And as far as Staryu goes, it doesn't have its psychic topping yet. And that means at least Confusion is doing neutral damage, which is always a plus. And outside of maybe it critting you or you missing with five sleep powders, this one's really easy. And we can move on to the real issue like always. And that's gonna be Star Me. Now it's always bad for a lot of runs, but the drowsy that we just fought was the appetizer in this awful dinner that is going against Psychic Types. The strategy options here are the same that we just went over, but I think the safest strat here is just to set up Sleep Powder, throw a Supersonic at it, and then just slowly chip away. But Sleep Powder isn't always reliable with its 75% accuracy, and Supersonic feels like honestly it has 20% accuracy most of the time, so it's a little slow to get this strategy online. Now couple that with the fact that Confusion feels like it only does two damage a clip and this one is a long one. I do actually get through on the first attempt but I do owe a lot of that to actually getting to do a full run already and kind of knowing ahead of time that this one is rough and that I better level up and this is where those extra battles come in clutch to stop me from being overly frustrated. Now here doing the rocket battle before Misty was a key thing and it was more than just experience. It takes a lot of PP to get through that drowsy and if you want to be able to go down to the SS Anne and dig back after Surge, it really helps to go ahead and get that out of the way. Because on the test run, I did have to pick up the Ether in the SSN, which I've never had to do before. I'd also like to say that if you time it right when you're going underground here, you can immediately get the hidden full restore with no text. It's such a minuscule and insignificant time save, but it always feels fun for me to do. I play on times 3 speed, so it's a little bit harder. And on the Parasect run, doing it on the times 4 speed was very rough. But I just wanted to mention it because I think it's kind of cool. Now moving on to the SSN, we cannot get Body Slam because it feels like Game Freak seemingly just rolled a dice on what Pokemon could learn this absurdly powerful move. And from there, it's time to 
time to fight the gentleman. And honestly, I have some bad luck against Ponyta here. I take multiple embers and I get crit, but Butterfree tanks it quite well. And I guess the point I'm trying to make is that our defenses aren't really paper. And while I am critical of Butterfree at different times in the video, it's not absolute garbage, guys. It's, it's a pretty solid Pokemon. Now let's talk about rival number three. The only way I've gotten stronger here is in levels and my moveset is essentially exactly the same. And this one, it didn't feel too great, guys. Now let's just get the first part of the way. I throw Sand Attack Caution to the wind, and here I go straight Confusion on the Pidgeotto and the Raticate because I desperately want to speed up some of these early battles. And things are great, but then we get to Kadabra. Now at this point, I only have 7 PP left of Confusion, and I feel like it's going to take at least 4 for Trimerlion, so I need to do something drastic. And here we get another horrible part of the game where I have to rely on Poison Powder and Supersonic to do damage while using just a few of our Confusions to help out and it leads to this absolute slog of a battle where I eventually come out the victor but we are left at 4 HP and ladies and gentlemen if this is your first time watching something with sleep powder or just sleep in general welcome to how things are going to work if I hit and I can keep the enemy asleep I just win there's no counterplay to for the opponent unless I miss or something like that and let's just kind of thank god that we have sleep powder over hypnosis or this would be an even more inconsistent run that makes me rage. And guys, let me just say that I really enjoy doing these runs. It's one of my favorite things to do in my free time. The idea of the tier list building up and comparing each Pokemon against each other in my rule sets is almost always exciting to me. And that foundation is what makes even the bad runs like Ditto or Zubat worth finishing to me. Now, with that said, I think these sleep powder based runs with these subpar early games are just the hugest slogs and the runs that use the less accurate hypnosis or even worse. Now we have many more runs to go that will be just like this and you might wonder why I just don't ban moves like that and to that I say that although it's not the most fun or the most engaging thing to watch there's no denying that it's Pokemon's like Butterfree's best strategy and it gives them the best chance to compete because let's be real if Butterfree didn't have sleep powder it would be a pretty bad Pokemon with a very limited move pool and it would undoubtedly add hours and hours to its final time and I guess what I'm trying to say is that I definitely feel you guys if you kind of roll your eyes when I get to a hypnosis or sleep based run but I do try to make the best content that I can out of it and if it frustrates you it frustrates even me so I get it I just wanted to say that let's move on I do have to use an ether before surge due to how limited Butterfree's PP is in the early game but let's talk about something else that I haven't mentioned Butterfree is bug and flying topping and it's pretty bad to say the least and now we get to dive into one of its 100 weaknesses with electric damage. Now the first part of the battle is very simple, it always is. Especially on the Pikachu, I want to put them to sleep because I really want to avoid that paralysis and things go pretty much perfect here. I'm able to take out the Voltorb and the Pikachu while not taking any damage which is a pretty typical sleep powder battle. And as for Raichu, the same thing happens. A Thunderbolt would have definitely set my butter free but I just get the sleep to land and it can't retaliate and I chip it down with our pretty low damage and I take this one on the first attempt there's not much more to say about it it's sleep powder now let's not be too negative and let's focus on the task at hand this is the final stretch of the game where Butterfree has to be a bad Pokemon barely hanging on with 25 PP of damage the wrapping last and the bug catcher with three Pokemon would deplete over half your PP along going towards rock tunnel and you have to use the center here just so you can make it through and from there it's not smooth sailing the Pokemaniacs with the slowpoke are a nightmare for a Pokemon that's not particularly strong and has 50 base power resisted move only. There's not much to say here except that the second Pokemaniac absolutely handles me with ease and I have another reset right here. Even on the next time it's not that great. We've already kind of touched on the psychic types but I just come extremely close to losing here and I have to rely on confusion damage and I don't mean from the, the decent move I mean from supersonic and this little insignificant battle is perhaps one of the most luck based battles that I've done in a long time and when I see the end results play back it's pretty lucky that I only had one reset but overall this was the only little roadblock in rock tunnel and we can skip ahead after I show some extremely sped up footage against the self-destruct hiker that I survived damage on 1 HP and we get bailed out by sleep powder once again. I exit rock tunnel with zero uses of confusion and I'm forced to make an extra heal here just to get to Cerulean and from here I wish I could tell you guys that this run turns into a powerhouse contender like Execu 
Creator, but I just can't say that. But it does get much better. A run like this calls for an immediate visit to the Celadon Mart, and here I pick up some essentials. A Pokédoll for Mimic, fresh water for Saffron Access, and I buy a single Calcium because that's all I can afford, then I'm on my way. I pick up Fly, and from there, it's an immediate visit to Mr. Psychic to pick up the TM. Now Psychic is a great move. I don't need to sing its praises, but more importantly, it makes us actually able to hit twice as hard as we have been up to this point. Now I need to pick up the two easily accessible PP ups because I'm sick and tired of having PP problems. And once I do that, I pick up the TM for double edge. Now this is something that I relied on to combat those psychic types in my previous test runs. And I only get it in this run just in case because I do have different plans. Now as for Giovanni, it's nothing special, but it is nice to see that I can actually get through some battles much more efficiently with the power buff from psychic. At level 32, I get the chance to learn side beam. It's obviously not as good as psychic, but it is better than confusion and it's still very useful coming up in a few spots. And now we get to Erica's gym. I have great moves and a great type matchup here. And this week, things are gonna be different. Now, I want to use Psybeam as much as I can here to get the most value out of it, and I'm taking out Pokemon easily enough, but wait a second. I take out this Bellsprout and the Weeping Bell comes in. It barely survives after I use the Psybeam on it, and then it puts me to sleep. And I was thinking, oh no, not again. I've, I, it, this is like a meme at this point, but I do wake up fairly quick. We take it out. No worries in this gym this week. Now I take out the rest of the trainers, I get more valuable, easy experience, and after that I take on Erica. And just like I mentioned earlier, I have a superb matchup here, and we can quickly just move on from this battle. The worst thing that happens here is I get poisoned, but there's nothing really anything close that threatens a reset here. Afterwards I get Mega Drain. It will be a great help in the run, but I won't use it immediately, but it is worth mentioning now since it will be relevant later. And I'll be skipping over Pokemon Tower today. There's no resets. Uh, I'm well over leveled past rival number four, and I have psychic damage for the Ghastlies, so let's not dwell on more boring bits and let's skip ahead just a little. I get the final HMs of the run, and I make one last trip to the Celadon Mart, and we can pick up five more Calciums. And I meant to do this earlier, I kept forgetting but I want to use Swift for this run. I replace Supersonic on the moveset with it immediately, and we'll go into why I chose this when we get to Koga. Now, with our only viable choices, pretty much for moves in the late game being Mega Drain or Psychic, you need some nice, normal physical damage to deal with those Psychic types that we've had a lot of problems with. And on my other run, I was using Double Edge. Now, yes, it hits much harder, but if things go even just a little bit wrong, that recoil damage becomes a detriment, and I just didn't like how it felt. I didn't like how it performed in that run. Now Swift isn't the best move and it does have that little added bonus that it can't miss. It bypasses accuracy and it can just kind of chip away pretty decently and overall it helps a lot in battles like Koga's underling trainers that could cause some trouble without a normal move like this. Now as for Koga, we don't really need to go into it. I have Psychic and I don't even need Sleep Powder for this one if you want to know how easy it is. I do heavy damage and this one is over very quick and that speed badge boost is very welcome for this this run where our stats aren't necessarily elite. After that I can gear up for Silph Co and today we are only getting the rare candy on the 10th floor before getting to some of the tougher parts of the run. And that brings us to rival number 5 and this will kind of tell us how much we have to actually rely on sleep powder during the toughest battles of the game. Pidgeot is first and immediately I have to get this thing to sleep or I'm going to take a bunch of damage. I end up taking some damage and then I start to use Psy Beam. Now the logic here is that if it's asleep I can save some PP for Psy Psychic, but it does wake up after I put it to sleep again, and I eventually do swap to Psychic, but using Psybeam early made me take just a huge chunk of damage before moving on. Now next up is Execute, and we've seen this in other videos, but these little coconut eggs, they really want to poison me because of my bug typing. It's a huge hassle to get this one to sleep, and it keeps waking up, but luckily I am able to get it to sleep, and we utilize Swift to take this one down. Gyarados is next, and guys, this might surprise you a little bit, but this is another Pokemon that I would honestly just feel a lot better about if it was asleep and couldn't attack me at all, but they're here, it just works to perfection. There's not much more to say. Next up is Alakazam, and I'm just gonna be a broken record here. Now this is what Swift is for. We talked about the psychic tops, but this thing could still easily one-shot me with a crit, so sleep is preferred. Get your sleep powder out. And right here, it just works. I take it out with a couple of hits. Charizard is last, and honestly guys, I just kind of fat-fingered my controller here. I go for Swift on accident. It is worth noting that 
Butterfree could have survived an Ember to get a second shot at the sleep, but Charizard crits, and this one is one of those resets where it's completely my fault, and let's not show every second of this, all these attempts going forward. Now let's pick back up and execute, and this time I do get poisoned, but I am able to move on, and I avoid pretty much any heavy damage before getting back to the Charizard. And here, get used to this one guys. Predictably, I hit the sleep powder and this one is over. I'm able to have free reign and I just use some psychics and we get past this battle. And overall, if you want an example of just how broken sleep is in generation one, this showcases it pretty well. Now the funny thing here is that I'm out of antidotes because I've just been poisoned so much in this run and I actually get through the rocket grunt and the Giovanni without bothering to heal because I don't want to dip into my very limited supply of full restores. And as you can see things were pretty easy to spot that so let's just keep scooting along from there i pick up mimic and now it's time for sabrina i didn't expect this one to be too great but let's just kind of dive in and see how it goes and by this point in the run i'm just fully embracing our sleep status overlords and i'm just putting things to sleep left and right i'm able to not miss any sleep powders i take out the first three pokemon and i chip them down without taking any damage at all and things are looking pretty good on the alakazam i get it to sleep i do some pretty good damage damage, but then it wakes up. And I'm just thinking in my head right now, eh, don't even worry about the sleep powder. I can just power through it with some swifts and we'll get out of here. But it starts to use recover. It starts to out heal my damage output. And eventually it just crits with a side beam and it forces a reset. And it was another one of those things where I definitely misplayed this one. I should have just put it back to sleep and it is what it is. On the next attempt, I do get poisoned on Venomoth and I take a lot more damage, but through the power of sleep, all things are possible. So jot that one down and I managed to claw my way and barely hang on to win the spot with a sliver of health to avoid any further resets. Now it wasn't clean, but I'll take it. Now from there, it's time for a nice and refreshing swim down to Cinnabar. Being weak to fire means that I'm not really that interested on doing some extra battles. And after a little bit of Tombstoner, brother, it's time for Blaine. Now I don't expect this one to be as bad as the scissor run since we don't have a double weakness. We aren't on the improved Sanquee move sets and I have sleep powder so let's just kind of see how it goes and not very good is the answer I'll keep this first reset brief I don't go for sleep powder on the Growlithe because it's bad Growlithe is one of the worst Pokemon and I do take some fire spin damage on the Ponyta and I end up struggling a little bit to rain in that Rapidash but I do make it through now as for Arcanine you just let me just say you can't win every sleep based battle and you're gonna have some bad luck now I do go back and forth trying to wrestle control of this fight and I eventually get hit with a fire blast to force a reset and honestly you deserve a few of those if you're just straight relying on sleep status and like a lot of battles in this run like most of them where we reset on the next attempt i'm able just to hit sleep powder and i win without any counter play from my opponent now this one wasn't bad mainly just because of how oppressive sleep powder is and the special badge boost is really great to have but let's just keep it rolling now afterwards i do finally replace psi beam with mega drain and that means we can just really quickly skim over the Giovanni gym fight. Now outside of Doug Trio, which I put to sleep just to avoid that really high damage, all of his Pokemon are weak to grass or psychic moves, so you can just do a little quick doodle on the notepad and, and figure out how this one's gonna go. Even if I take damage, I can just heal it right back up with Mega Drain, and overall this is just a free fight. I will say it doesn't bode well for a Pokemon's overall strength level when they can't one-shot the lower special ride on that's double weak to grass, but that's neither here nor there. Let's not pop on Butterfree. Let's move on to the final five battles of the run, or six, I guess. Before this fight, I use a couple of rare candies, and that gets my speed over 119. Now, that's very significant, but we'll go over that soon, and let's just kind of hop into this battle. The lead is Pidgeot, like it always is, because why would it be different? And I don't want to take any super effective damage here, so I put it to sleep. Shocker, I know. And I use Psychic. We get this one down really quickly. And even if I did, let's say even if I took 90% of my health and damage, I have Mega Dream. And the Rhyhorn here simply exists to be a siphon for free healing if I need it. After that, Execute is up next, and it wants to put that poison on me. And I do try my best to hit heads on my coin flip every time, but my coin flipping skills are not enough. I do get poisoned before finally moving on to the Gyarados. And here I make a mistake that I seem to do quite often when I have Mega Drain. I'm thinking, I'll just put it to sleep. I'll use Mega Drain a few times, and every time I try to do this strategy, it backfires. Now Gyarados wakes up, and I end up wasting all of those turns and I'm in a worse position after it hits a hydro pump. So 
I need to stop doing that. Next up is Alakazam. It outspeeds me, but it only goes for recover. I'm able to hit it with sleep. I chip it down and I even go for some mega drains, but it's not doing that much. I just kind of want to offset the poison damage. And overall, when I'm done with this, I'm not in a great position for Charizard. Now here is where the 120 speed is needed. And you can see, if you can see to the right here, Charizard has 119 speed. And if I hit the sleep powder, it's over with. And here I do, but it wakes up immediately. I miss the next one and I'm just too low to survive a flamethrower and that's a reset. On the next attempt I'm able to avoid poison on the execute and it makes this fight infinitely less annoying. And then on the Gyarados since I'm not hurt I'm not poisoned I learn from my mistakes no more Mega Drain nuke it down and we can just move on. That means when I make it back skipping ahead to the Charizard I predictably get the sleep to land and I'm just so much more healthy here that I honestly could afford to miss a time or two but I just nuke it down and this goes like all the sleep runs goes and I just win. It seems to always go like this on the second turn after you reset. Now we are in the final stretch boys. Our time isn't top tier elite but it's really not that bad and there are some problematic battles ahead like Lorelei and the ice weakness that we haven't had to deal with yet but let's just kind of see what happens. Now here I don't have a boost so I use the rest of my rare candies and we're going to begin our attempts on the elite four at level 59. Now as for Lorelei we know what to expect. I do out speed and if I hit the sleep powder it's all over with. Even if I miss a little here and there I can recover my lost health with Mega Drain and overall I feel pretty decent about it. Now the dugong here cooperates for the most part but on the cloister you can see that it really doesn't do a lot of damage considering that its Aurora Beam is super effective and that gives me even more confidence. Slowbro can be annoying because Amnesia just makes it absurdly tanky but eventually I swap over to Swift and this one isn't much of an issue overall. On the Jinx I miss the first sleep powder, I get hit for some pretty nice damage from a retaliatory ice punch, but I manage to sprinkle some of that magic powder on it and I'm able to get by with a few swifts. Finally up is Lapras. Blizzard would be scary, but let's not drag this one on any longer. I hit sleep powder, battle over. Next up is Bruno, and you might notice that I ran out of Mega Drain PP on Lorelei, but it's Bruno, we don't need it. Psychic can just one shot everything outside of the Machamp, and this one is just your typical Bruno fight and we can just quickly move on. Now we'll see Bruno give us his best shot in the next video guys. Next up is Agatha and you would think that with Psychic this one wouldn't be that bad and you wouldn't really be wrong but we can just kind of see that Butterfree just doesn't pack that big of a punch. Here I just want to go straight Psychic against the first Gengar. It goes for a Confuse Ray but I do fight through it and I take it out. Go bad isn't up next and I actually want to set up Sleep here because Wing Attack does super effective damage and honestly Haze is just one of the most annoying moves in the game but I do struggle to wrangle it in but it turns out that psychic is a one shot anyway so I kind of wasted some turns here but it just let's just move on and from here I'm just saying fuck it let's go for it I'm straight psychic from here on out I'm able to avoid anything that's too annoying and I just kind of win this battle this is one of the very few late game fights that doesn't involve a lot of sleep powder usage and honestly I really do appreciate that about this fight even though it wasn't too bad now before I take Lance on and the infamous Gyarados threat I do learn mimic over Swift because this is where it'll be most useful. Honestly, I could have just not had Swift for the entire Elite Four and just use Mimic, but let's not talk about that now. As for Gyarados, this one is a sleep powder or bust type situation, and here we just get the ultimate bust, guys. We get hit critically hit with a hyper beam, and it kind of devolved us back into a Metapod for the rest of the Elite Four. Now, on the next attempt, like you might expect from a lot of other battles, I just hit the sleep powder and I win the battle, and this is what frustrates me the most with these kind of runs. It's just a continuous series of 75% dice rolls to win, but let's not get back on that. On the first Dragonair, I take Agility with Mimic after putting it to sleep. I don't set up yet because it looks like we'll be leveling right after this. And Lady Luck giveth and she taketh in this fight. Now I want to get the second Dragonair to sleep and set up Agilities for speed, but it wakes up and it crits on a Hyper Beam. And at this point, I go kind of halfway between using Mega Drain to get back some HP and Psychic before being set up to move on. Now on the Aerodactyl, I'm now extremely fast with the boost and I hit the sleep. Now I decide that the neutral and boosted damage of Mega Drain can get me some health back and finally, this strategy actually works out for me. It works so well that Lance uses a Hyper Potion and I'm able to siphon all that beautiful HP back into our little butterfly and we're actually at full health going in towards the end. Finally up is Dragonite. I hit the sleep powder 
and we can just leave it at that. You already know what happens. Now we have the champion left, and can Sleep Powder carry Butterfree's dead carcass through to the end? Let's find out. Up first is Pidgeot, and if you guess Sleep Powder, pat yourself on the back. It connects, and now I need to mimic Sky Attack here, and Psychic can just nuke it down with a couple of hits. Alakazam is next, and Sky Attack will do the job, but it's a two turn move, and I'm gonna go for that sweet precious powder once again. I miss, I take a nice chunk of damage, but the next turn, I get it to take a little nap, and I'm able to charge up and release a Sky Attack to move on. Right on is next, and let me just say that most of these in game fights involve me using Sleep Powder, and imagine what it feels like if you were the one Pokemon on the enemy team that the enemy trainer just said, fuck it, I don't need Sleep Powder for this little weak piece of shit. And I imagine that's kind of how Rhydon feels, but it's pretty much just a siphon for some free health. I probably should have kept Rhydon's feelings in mind, but I can't take it back now. Let's move on. Next up is Executor. It's annoying, and I do need sleep once again, but I miss, and the tables are turned on me. And now I find myself asleep, getting my ass beat by a bunch of eggs. I take a lot of damage here, and eventually I'm able to get off a sky attack, but it's a range, and it survives at very low HP, and when it's all said and done, I'm very battered and bruised going into the Gyarados. And here I'm able to connect with the sleep powder, and once again I'm trying to heal up just a little bit with Mega Drain, I promise this works. But here it actually works out kind of well. I actually get a badge boost, and I recover just a little health before we move on to the final boss of the game. Obviously, Sleep Powder is needed here, and guys, I flip that coin, it hits Tails. I get hit with a Fire Blast despite being already at low health, and it's some salt in the wounds, it's another reset. On the next attempt, I have kind of a bit of a Eureka moment to save a turn or two. Now, I'm just not going to use Sleep Powder on the Alakazam, and I just want to get off of Sky Attack straight up, but I do take all but 10 points of my life and damage, and when I take it out, I'm missing about three wings, I'm hobbling around to the finish line. Now in comes our savior, Rhydon. He's pretty much like a walking hyper potion, and with Mega Drain, I just couldn't be happier to see it. And this is why I opted not to sleep the Alakazam on this attempt, because I knew I could just get the health back. I don't one-shot it, which is kind of pathetic if you think about it, but let's not go into that. I get a badge boost to help me out later, and then I end this part recovering over 100 HP. Next up is Executor. I take some minor damage, but Sky Attack was either a range last time, or the badge boost from Leer earlier pushed me over that damage threshold, and I'm able to get out of here with one hit. On the Gyarados, I put it to sleep. What do you want me to say? I'm not gonna lie about it. I want some health back, but I don't want to overdo it. There's a fine line of Mega Drain playing with your food here. I end up getting back over 100 health once again, and I don't play with my food anymore before taking it out. Now that leaves us with Charizard, and there's only one question that we can ask. Can the powder hit the lizard? And the answer is yes, but it immediately wakes up. But it's a false alarm, guys, because we hit sleep on the next turn. Charizard never wakes up. We finish off the battle in the most fitting of ways for Butterfree by using the overpowered sleep status to where our opponent can't react or do anything. But that's it. Butterfree has done it. I tried not to be too negative or salty, and I even rewrote parts of the script several times, and it is what it is, but this run, guys, it just felt very average, and it had a very clear crutch if I had to kind of tell you how this felt to actually play, but without stalling, let's just get to the stats. Butterfree finishes the run with a level of 63 with 9 resets, and its final in-game time is 3 hours, 17 minutes, and 42 seconds. Now, we'll go into this more later, but first, let's take a look at the Genetic Freak music. Mewtwo, and I won't lie, I got a little joy at watching this little average frustrating Butterfree get outsped and one shot immediately by a psychic crit, and that's another reset for Mewtwo. And on the second attempt, it doesn't crit, I land the sleep, and after about 52 turns of keeping it to sleep and doing about 3 damage a turn with psychic, I finally get it down, and I'm beginning to wonder if the sleep powder move should just be getting all this credit rather than Butterfree itself. But let's talk about Butterfree on the tier list. I'm still shifting my criteria around, but but let's just automatically zoom in on the B tier here, and all these old grayed out runs that, I, that didn't have to deal with resets are kind of up to my interpretation, but I'm not going to be surprised if Mr. Mime and Snorlax both move up when they got redid, but I do know that Butterfree is better than Moltres and Machop. Now I think my biggest criticisms, as you probably can just go ahead and guess, is that it's not particularly strong, and it just relies on Sleep Powder so hard for me to consider it to be actually great. Now I think for right now, what we got going on, I think the middle of the B tier makes the most sense, but remember that this tier list is very malleable, it's very incomplete, and eventually we'll start getting things more together, and I'm likely going to do a tier list video soon, so stay tuned for that if you want to chime in or maybe 
iron some things out with me. But honestly, that's all I got for you guys today. Now, if you have any grievances, if you have any complaints, if you want to be like that one guy and just point out little mistakes I made and be an asshole, uh, go ahead and do it. And next week, I do have one more bug run. It's a cross-gen run. I'm very excited for it. I'm not even going to spoil it for you guys, and I hope to see you there. Now, if you made it this far, I appreciate you, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your week, and I'll see you then. Bye.